Good morning. Welcome to the Harry Edwards Healing Sanctuary. My name's Gary. And behind me is the pathway to the Cherry Tree Walk. But I'm going to do the other way today. This is leading through to the woods. And just off to my left at the moment, that's the meditation glade. And there are plans afoot to have a little gazebo put up there so that you can be in the meditation glade and meditate when it's, even when it's raining. Just going through these lovely woods. And Tracy created a fairy garden here. So periodically on your walk through here, you come to things pertaining to the fairies. getting ready for a healing up here the other day and a deer came past so there's all sorts of wildlife about here It was nice to see so many people up here on Saturday at our summer fair. And I was stuck in the marquee most of the day, but um, it was nice.
Sorry about the internet going down every so often. It tends to happen here in the woods. back to the driveway. And the entrance way to the sanctuary and greeted by that lovely picture of Harry and in here to what is now the Bluebells room And this room was, at one time, the waiting room. And it's going to be again. So we come in to the desk here. A little television that can publicise our forthcoming events. You have to use your imagination a lot when you're here because above us at the moment is the healing office. They receive all the details of healings that are requested. People send a lot of emails in. But in Harry Edwards day, We'll just look up to the ceiling. There was no ceiling. And this room was used as a badminton court. And before Harry Edwards was here, there was a sculptor working here. And the sculptor would go upstairs. And these are the stairs just behind this door here. There's a stone spiral staircase. And then round the edge of what is now the roof, or round the ceiling, there was a gallery. So he'd go to his gallery and look down on these, on his uh, works of art. And apparently he could get a better view by looking at them that way. So this has gone over the years from a sculptor's studio to a badminton court to a waiting room and now it's the Bluebell Sanctuary. And they meet every other week and they're a cancer support group. Just coming out of here. look through at the rose garden which looks beautiful although there were when Alan took photos of it on 
Saturday, there were some more people here. In Harry Edwards' time, before the renovations in the 1970s, this corridor was lined with plants, very much like the plant which we've got there now. We're trying to get them back. But it was lined with plants. It's coming into the chapel now. Beautiful picture of Harry Edwards. And I'm not the only healer who draws a lot of inspiration from that picture. When we go to the altar, if you like, we've got the bust of Harry Edwards. Leading down to the table. which contains the distant healing folder. Cast of Harry's hands. Harry Edwards, of course, was very popular and he received in his lifetime a lot of presents. And one of his healing clients was a blacksmith and he made for him this candle holder which has the sanctuary symbol in it the golden cross surrounded by a golden circle now We'll just go into the healing minute. So, I can leave the view there of the sanctuary symbol and the bust of Harry Edwards. We give thanks that we are gathered here today. We ask that this place be filled with love, light, friendship, and healing energies. Surround us in protection as we open our hearts and expand our consciousness to allow the flow of love and healing to come through us. As your crown chakra opens, you feel or imagine a column of pure white light filling your body. Then feel the balance and harmony within your body as the earth energy rises up through the soles of your feet and your base chakra. You feel your connection to the universal source of pure, unconditional love, balanced by the nurturing, protective love of Mother Earth. And the Harry Edwards prayer, may I be thankful for the blessings I already have. Grant me relief from pain and sickness, protect me from all ills, and grant me good health in the days to come. Remove all causes of imperfection and bring the healing ministers close to me so that I may be conscious of their presence. In your strength, in all times of need, grant me confidence to overcome my fears and not to anticipate harm. Teach me how to live rightly in your sight, to do only that which is right and true. I pray that good guidance and right influencing will inspire all your peoples to be as brothers, one to the other, and that peace shall endure for all time. We ask now that all the people whose names we hold in the distant healing folder may receive healing for the highest good. We also request healing for their family, friends, and people for whom they have requested distant healing. May they be placed in the healing light and receive that which they are allowed to receive for their highest good. Please join me now in a minute's silence where we can send out our love and our own healing thoughts to any of our friends and loved ones at this time who really need healing.
our thanks and blessings for your help here today and to our friends in spirit. My reading today has been taken from a book called Everyday Karma by Carmen Hara. It's a book I've read from before. And she was talking about her upbringing in Romania. And this part of the story particularly stood out to me. It's from the book Everyday Karma, and this is a part called A Crisis of Values. And she says, when I was growing up in Romania, my father had a good job working at the local bank and we had what we needed. We were satisfied. We weren't rich and we weren't poor and money really wasn't an issue for us. We had our family and friends around us. We supported and loved one another. My parents worked hard, but they didn't live to work. They had their priorities in order and didn't let earning a living take place of everything else in their lives. It would have been ludicrous then to even imagine the word workaholic. People would have thought you were crazy. When Ceausescu came to power, life became a lot more difficult for us. Food and many basic things we took for granted were harder to come by. And even worse was this stifling sense of feeling controlled, boxed in. I remember my father waking up at 2 a.m. to wait in line for hours for just two bottles of milk with detergent in them. But somehow, we still knew what we, what we valued and loved. And we still found ways to get by and be happy. In today's world, we're so business-oriented and money-focused that often we lose sight of our higher purpose, living our lives with a vague sense of dissatisfaction as a result. Our value system as a society and as individuals is confused and we are seeing and feeling the negative consequences. Living in a consumer culture certainly has its benefits and we have a much higher standard of living than our parents and grandparents and yet something's been lost when we don't have time to be with our families and loved ones. Why do, why do we all work so much? Why do we let work take priority over our friends and family? When everyone is working so much, no one has time to love and support one another. And we try to make up for this lack of support by overeating and overbuying and developing all types of soul-murdering addictions. Who could have dreamed of eating disorders 50 years ago? When drugs are killing our children, when our children are killing other children, we know something is terribly wrong. We've lost our connection to other people. And most important, we've lost our connection to our true selves, to our essence. I think it's crucial that people move beyond physical desires and physical satisfaction and immediate gratification of all of our needs. If we're ever to find fulfillment in life and move forward as individuals and as a society. So how do we do that? How do we stop the treadmill that the whole world seems to be on? Sometimes it feels that you either keep up the pace or get knocked off. Life has become expensive, and if we're, gonna, if we're going to have a roof over our heads and keep our children educated, we need to work hard to keep up. The problem with this is that it'll never make you happy, and ultimately, it's meaningless. Yes, we all want to survive, but do we really have to have the best of everything? Is that really going to make us happy? Is it going to reduce our stress levels? Is it going to help us give and receive love? Is it going to help us gain wisdom? I don't think so. It's time to rethink our values and look at the price we are paying for what we have come to think of as success. There's a lot to think of there. And thank you to Carmen Hara. I just want to continue my walk around the house. This sanctuary this chapel was also rebuilt in the 1970s. And what you see is the chapel now, with the altar at the front, wasn't the sanctuary Harry Edwards, Harry Edwards works in. His sanctuary was at the back, it's all been turned round. 
So his sanctuary was like here, just in front of that radiator. <laughs> that was where Harry Edwards was. In fact, this was the billiard room of the house when Harry Edwards moved in. And what you see now is the archway. That was a complete wall. That other half of the, of the sanctuary didn't exist. It was just this part. So these chairs would have been facing the other way. When the work was completed, Harry Edwards was very pleased with it. He liked it very much. Extending the size of the, of the chapel was a wonderful thing for him. It was a wonderful idea. He wasn't so pleased with the healing rooms where he kept his cactuses because he, he loved, he kept cactus plants and they all had to be thrown out when they made healing rooms. So he wasn't terribly pleased about that. I'm coming out now, just to walk through. And though it looks wet and gray and miserable. It's a nice walk out there. And the sunroom, which now has these tables here for the cafe. And as I mentioned earlier about the sculptor that lived here before Harry Edwards, these, the boy with the butterfly and the image of Christ, The statue here, what I presume is Bacchus. Those are all that survives. Just walking through, have the lounge. And there's a picture up there of a young Harry Edwards. Well, thank you for listening to me. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.